Back when society was more formal across the board, casual actually meant something. You could let your hair down and feel like it was out of the ordinary. But now everything's casual all the time, and nothing ever seems special. But tonight's dinner is special. I'm making juicy braised quails on a bed of savory mushrooms, a light and creamy pumpkin mousse with chocolate sauce, fig and goat cheese tart on puff pastry with port sauce, and delicious strands of buttery Savoy cabbage. Because why be small when we can be grand? everything being so casual all the time. Every time I get invited out, it seems to be a barbecue or a come in your jeans. So I'm rebelling with a bit of a dressed up dinner. Dessert is going to be a pumpkin mousse. It has rum in it. So two tablespoons of rum, which goes really well pumpkin, and two tablespoons of gelatin. Just stirring that to dissolve. Let it soften. Cream goes in in two phases. This phase is unwhipped. Three quarters of a cup. Just warming that gently and a little drop of vanilla. Two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm adding the gelatin. It's softened, but it needs to dissolve, so it needs a little heat. And two thirds of a cup of sugar. So that just needs to dissolve, and it looks dissolved to me. Voila. Now my star ingredient, pumpkin. Two and a half cups of puree, and that's really easy to do. You just cut a pumpkin in half and seed it, and put it in the oven at 375, 400 degrees, upside down, and bake it until it's really, 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 really soft, and then mash it or puree it in a mixer. Mixing it right in the pot. And now, just to be super elegant, I'm straining it. Because I want it super duper smooth. Look how nice. Now I'm just popping this in the fridge until it just starts to set. I don't want it to set set, because I want to fold some cream in. And the rest of the cream gets whipped. Now, if this is cool enough, it's not set, but it's thick and cold, so it will hold up in the cream. I'm making a grand dinner for some grand friends, and I've got a plan. Daniel, the boy from down the road, is going to be my waiter, so I don't have to jump up and down.
call me old fashioned. So I don't have matching dessert dishes, so I thought I'd serve them in champagne coupes. You're early. Oh my, I've never seen you look so All dressed up smashing for you. in your life. <laughs> People are going to be here in less than an hour. Actually, I didn't mean to make you do this. But since you're early, no napkin swans. Okay. <laughs> now, the original recipe had a chocolate sauce too, and I don't know if that actually needs it, but since I'm going a little over the top, I'm going to make one. I should really probably use a bamery, but I'm being a daredevil. As long as I heat it really, really gently, I shouldn't scorch the chocolate. Eight ounces of chocolate. So a cup of cream. Now for my main course, quails on a bed of mushrooms. Whenever I've been to a really nice restaurant, I'm always reminded of how much atmosphere affects the taste of food. You know, when plates are done really beautifully, when the dining room looks great, everything's just elevated. I'm making quail on mushrooms. And I think one bird per person is the perfect size. Would you like a glass of juice, Daniel? Well, how about a beer? No. When we're having dessert, you can have a beer. All right, sounds good. I'll get the quails going first. Some butter. So I've got these all tied up. You just tie around the base with string. I mean, the string comes off before you serve, so it doesn't have to be perfectly trussed. So just tie them so they don't fall apart. Otherwise, when they're done cooking, they're like this. Ah! This looks a little odd. The first step is just to brown them. I'm using butter and oil. Olive oil for taste, but also to keep the butter from burning. So season them first. Very dainty. Big onion. Some bacon. About one slice per quail. This gets sliced into little laudon. I'm not cooking them right, just color nice and golden. And flip them over. Once they're nice and golden, all over, pop those out quickly. Voila, and then the bacon. So now the bacon comes out, the fat stays behind, and then the onions turn. And I also need wine and veal stock. You can get it sometimes, there are places in markets where they make stocks and sauces or butcher shops you can get it too, but you really want a nice one. Once they're soft, add flour, that's a heaping spoonful, 
and this will help thicken the final sauce. Now I'm just going to add a cup of wine to scrape up these bits on the bottom. And then everybody goes back in. Seems wrong not to have a bay leaf. And then, look at this gorgeous stalk. Look how thick. So much gelatin in it. Oh. Okay, that's my idea of heaven. Now these just need about 20 minutes and get part two ready. Now look at these. These are chanterelle and a new find, blue foot. They look like pieces of chalk on the heel. And these are going to make a nice bed for the quails. juices cook down a lot. I just want to pull out the quails for a second while I mix things. Now the mushrooms make a base and the quails go on top. I'm just going to fish out the bay leaf. Add the parsley. Now the quails just get set on top. It's really spectacular because you have brown mushrooms with those wonderful orange chanterelles. It looks very natural. I'm just going to keep those warm until we eat because I need a first course. I'm making tiny, tiny fig tartlets on puff pastry with port sauce. I'm making a grand dinner for some grand friends and we're going to have a grand time, especially since we're starting with figgy tarts. I'm making fig and goat cheese tartlets on puff pastry with port sauce. You need a nice hot oven, 400. These are tarts with a little sauce but they get cooked at the same time. I'm going to poach the figs in a little syrup. So I need a cup of sugar and a cup of port. So I just turn that on and let the sugar dissolve. So once you can't see the sugar anymore, you can add the figs. And I have beautiful little teensy tiny figs. So they can go right into the syrup. And they don't need to poach for very long, just about 10 minutes. Now this is the cheating part. I'm cheating on the pastry. This is puff pastry. And I'm just going to cut out little tart rings in a very simple way using a ramekin. I want about four inch rings and this is just perfect. The trick is you lay them on one sheet Then you top them with another sheet because this weights them down. And then you still get the layers, but they don't puff up into a soft puff pastry. They become a nice, crisp base. They need about 15 minutes. And then 
this just one last part. A little creamy base with goat cheese. I wonder how much I need. One, two, three, four. You want about a tablespoon on each tart. And you want to use a fresh goat cheese for this, not the hard aged kind. You won't be able to get it nice and creamy. In fact, it's hard to get a creamy one creamy. You need to add some cream. I think I can spread that. Now, check on my little figs. I just want to make sure they're soft. I'm just going to give them another minute and get some rosemary. Okay, that's ready. And I should check the figs out. You don't want the figs to cook till they're falling apart. See how they fatten up and get nice ruby color. Now the syrup can turn into a nice sauce for the side of the figs. It just has to cook down until it's syrup consistency. Right now it's a little thin. These are toasted walnuts, just to scatter on top and give some crunch. You can throw the rosemary right in there. And a little pepper. And actually a little salt too. have six crisp e tarts. They're nice and flat so they're dense and crisp all the way through instead of soft but it's still puff pastry. Just a little improved if you ask me. Now assembly. And delicately delicately spread the cheese on top. Now the figs just arrange little halves all over the top. And then just a few little walnut bits on top. Now these just go back in the oven just for five minutes. Let everything get familiar. And they're done. Mmm, nice. All the fig slices look so dressed up, nice with the nuts, and nice crisp bottoms. I just have one more thing. Cabbage, but cabbage for kings. It's Savoy cabbage in butter, and it's going with my quails. I didn't touch anything. <laughs> What is that? It's just apple juice. Okay, it's just apple juice. <laughs> Safe. You know where they go? Or on the inside. Forks on the inside, napkins on the outside. Just a personal Forks preference. On the inside. Thank you. Gotcha. <laughs> I have just one last thing to make. Savoy cabbage in butter. And it is one of my great discoveries of last winter. Do you think cabbage smells funny? This kind is divine. It's better than salad. The nice thing about Savoy cabbage is that it's not a tight, tight head. It's looser and very leafy and roughly, so it's really pretty and light. And then you shred quite finely like this. Come over, come over, and we'll meet again. Come over, come over, and we'll meet again. And then all I need is butter and a nice big pot, which I hope I can get it all into. Now, quite a lot of butter. Don't look. And the other nice thing is that it requires no boiling. But this just gets sauteed in the butter until it wilts down a bit and becomes brighter green. And it's done in five minutes. As soon as the butter melts. Okay, and then salt and pepper. Look at how nice and bright green the strands get.
and that's it. So this is a perfect bowl to go with it. Beautiful yellow and green strands of cabbage. They're so nice and ruffly. For first course, fig and goat cheese tartlets with a swirl of port syrup, then braised quail on a bed of wild mushrooms with a tangle of buttery savoy cabbage on the side, and for dessert, a magnificently creamy yellow mousse of squash with a dribble of chocolate sauce for those who want it. How do you race a pigeon? No, it was mediocre. <laughs> but is that yeah. a carrier pigeon? <laughs> and what kind of mushrooms are these? Two kinds, cremini mushrooms and also these wonderful bluefoot mushrooms. Multitude. Bacon. These quails are so cute, it's almost like I want to get them little clothes and stuff. <laughs> 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 mm. Can I have some more of that chocolate sauce, please? <laughs> Fantastic. Mm. Maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's to luck. Cheers. 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 You're supposed to look Cheers. in each other's eyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs>